Okay, we're going to use a definition and one of the equations that we've already developed to come up with a third equation uh, that's helpful because it does not involve time. Uh, some situations where you can't see the object moving, say inside of something else, uh, it's helpful if we can determine values without knowing the time, since we wouldn't be able to see it necessarily and track it inside the other object. So, uh, we're going to start with this base definition of acceleration on the left. Uh, now, what I need to do is I want to get rid of time. So I have to solve for t from this equation and then substitute that into the t's that are on the right. So solving the left one for t, I'm going to multiply both sides by t. I'm going to divide by a. And I'm going to have v minus u, that's final velocity minus initial velocity, over the acceleration. I'm going to take that quantity and I'm going to move it into here where there's a t and then here where it's going to become squared. So s equals u times v minus u over a plus uh, one half of the acceleration times v minus u over a squared. <coughs> now it's a lot of work from here to carefully make sure you have everything lined up uh, but that's what we're going to try to do we're going to go s equals uv over a so u times v over a minus u times u which is u squared over a plus uh, one half of a now v minus u squared is going to be v squared minus 2 uv uh, plus u squared. And then all of that is going to be over uh, 2 times a. This a is going to cancel out with the square of this a. And we're going to have 2 1 half uh, go with that and factor all the way through. So all of those are over 2a. Right? Now that means this 2 goes out and now we can do a rewrite and then start cleaning things up. Uh, we have that I have an a everywhere in every denominator so I'm just going to go ahead and multiply that uh, through on the other side. So I have a s equals u times v minus u squared plus uh, v squared over 2 minus uv uh, plus u squared over 2. Now I've got minus u squared uh, plus u squared over 2 so that's going to be uh, 1 minus a half or minus 1 plus a half is going to be negative u squared over 2. So that's gotten rid of that and that. And then I've got a ur, a uv, and a u minus a uv. They're going to cancel each other out, and they're disappearing. And then I have to add to this a v squared over 2. All right, and that's all equal to a times s. All right, and finally, we want to just go ahead and clean that up a little bit more uh, and rewrite it like it is in the data booklet. Uh, we're going to move the negative u to the other side. All right. So we're going to add u squared over 2 to both sides. Uh, actually, first let's take care of the 2. We're going to multiply both sides by 2. So then we have 2as equals minus u squared plus v squared. And then we'll go ahead and add the u to both sides, the u squared plus u squared over here will get rid of this and that will give us u squared plus 2as equals v squared and then if we just flip that around we'll have what we have in the book which is your final velocity squared is equal to your initial velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration rate times how far you have moved during that time period Right, so now there is an equation that we can solve for final velocity uh, and we don't have to know how much time it took. Uh, if we know the difference in the velocities and how far the trip was, 
well, we can figure out the acceleration rate. So this is a handy uh, combination of earlier equations, uh, and it's best used when there's no way, no easy way to measure uh, the time variable. Okay, so uh, that's the third and final equation that we're developing here for our use in kinematics, and it shows you the three uh, equations that are in fact in the data booklet. And so here they are on the right for topic two mechanics, the three kinematics equations. Uh, your distance is equal to the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by two, essentially your average velocity, times the t, the time it took. Uh, your distance can be figured out by multiplying your initial velocity times the time it took, plus one half of the acceleration rate uh, times t squared. Or we can, without time, we can find the final velocity squared uh, is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration rate times the distance that we move. Uh, the big element for all three of those is that in order for them to work, the acceleration must be constant during that time interval. So uh, something that's been dropped and is falling at the same rate, something that is speeding up at the same rate, like being pushed by the same force, those are the th situations for which this will apply. It does not, these three equations do not apply to every single situation, only to situations where the acceleration is constant.